We're joined by Pirates top prospect Tamar Johnson, who just took a little break from the AFL to go compete in Premier 12. And I'm so excited to hear what your expectations are for this because we just talked to Carson Williams, who is very excited about the potential to get to Tokyo, all of these different things. And I can imagine it's very special to have that USA across your chest. You got it with a hoodie on right now. Yeah, Thanks so much for true. taking the time, man. And uh, really excited to talk to you about your, your season and also what you got going on. For sure. For sure. I'm excited to talk to you guys. So tomorrow, I know you were a, a guy that was always like near the top of the first round in your draft year. Did you have any like prior experience playing for Team USA? We talked to Carson. He was not on like the U-12s, U-15s. Were you? Yeah, yeah. I was fortunate enough to do a lot of USA events. <laughs> Starting back when I was 13, I did like our um training development, you know, team. Did it the 14U team. Then I played on the 15U national team. And then um I played for the 18U national team. So I have a lot of experience playing for Team USA. So I'm excited to be back, you know, wearing a uniform and representing my country. Did you have the opportunity in some of those uh, events to to kind of travel into really unique places? And was there anywhere that really stood out to you? And is there anywhere that you're like most excited to potentially play? Yeah, we played um, in 15U in um, Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And we wow. were able to, you know, get us a gold medal there, you know, play some really good baseball. I had a pretty good team, you know. We had a lot of huge prospects on that team. So, you know, us getting that gold medal was very – it was very special for me, probably my – favorite moment in baseball so far, you know, winning that gold medal. So, you know, I'm excited to do it again, you know, trying to, trying to get it, get it for our guys. It's really fun looking back at, at some of those older, like team USA's, you know, when guys were on the U15 and, and things like that, who'd yeah. you come up on the, on the national circuit with, like, who are some of the guys that you were teammates with through USA baseball? So um, going back to that 15 U national team, um, Aiden Miller, you know, we were, we were in the outfield together. Like he was in right field and I was in center field. It's kind of <laughs> crazy to think about. Um, I had Steven Milam, you know, LSU, um, infielder. He was on my team. You know, we had a, a lot of good pitchers. I'm trying to, in the ATU team, we had Riley Stanford. We had Andrew Duquesne. She's at Vanderbilt right now. RJ Austin, Drew Jones, Elijah Green. Like we had so, so many guys, you know, a lot, a lot of guys that I, that I've played with throughout the um, USA circuit that I've made, you know, you know, best friends, honestly. And obviously something that you've enjoyed because here you are doing it again and, and getting an opportunity, you know, with a, a wider range of, of ages, which we, we talked about before where, you know, you have vets that, you know, have been you know playing in the big leagues as long as you've been alive, but also you got guys that you're competing with as recently as a couple months ago and, or maybe even for you a, a week or two ago with Drake Baldwin also on that yeah. roster. How, how unique is that for you? Because, you know, even in the minor leagues, you have, you have a larger, you know, age range, but not really until you get to, you know, the show where you're going to have that, you know, massive difference there. How cool has it been, been to be like one of the youngest guys on this really exciting team? And, you know, what's just the whole experience been maybe compared to your other USA experiences, even though you haven't played a, a, an actual game yet. Yeah, I mean, it's been amazing. You know, us, you know, we've been doing training for a little while, a little over a week now. So it's been really good, you know, learning from these guys, you know, talking to Rich Hill on the plane, you know, um, just being around all the veteran pitchers who played in the big leagues, you know, getting, you know, good information about, you know, what they're doing, what they're how, how they're trying to pitch guys and, you know, talking to a lot of hitters. You know, I, I played with Carson, you know, guy, the guy you just had. I played against him last year. Just, just just a little while ago, like you said, Drake Ball, when I played against him, you know, last week. So it's kind of, it's kind of crazy just to, you know, ha have those kind of teammates. But it's kind of cool just, you know, us finally playing with each other and not against each other. Tamar, I know this this nugget held true through your time in Bradenton, and I think it held true through your time in Greensboro, at least for the front half of the season. You did not see an arm that was younger than you for at least the first year and a half of your pro career. So this is I nothing new to you. It seems. <laughs> I mean, like I saw that and I could not believe it, dude. But I mean, you have been you've been like punching up in weight class since you entered pro ball. Do you feel like I, I don't know, like, do you even notice the difficulty or is it just, hey, this is baseball. I'm going to go do this. No, not really. You know that you just brought that to my attention. I've never really known that, honestly. But, you know, um, l luckily, you know, I, I'm through like, throughout the high school ranks and me being through the high school circuit. I've always played up. So, you know, it's not something that is necessarily new to me. You know, I've always kind of tried to play two age groups up and, you know, try to challenge myself to, you know, the best of my ability. So me being able to do it now is, you know, it's kind of just 
like like you said, me just going out there to just play baseball and just have fun. Going into the the regular season that you just had, I mean, again, kind of echoing the the age to level thing, getting to double A at, at a certain point where, you know, shortly after your 20th birthday, where again, you're going to be one of the youngest guys in that league, but also doing what you did in high A, where you're able to cut the strikeout rate, continue to walk at such a high clip, and then get that opportunity in double A. What was your focus going into this year? You, obviously, you flashed ridiculous power, and now you're, you're showing that ability to just continuously hit the ball and you know put the ball in play. Like, What was the focus this year? Was it kind of like becoming that well-rounded hitter as much as you could be, or just trying to survive being one of the youngest guys at each level? Yeah, it's just more of like, you know, just playing, trying to – win as much as I can, you know, win, win as many games as I can and me learn how to win, you know, for a team, because honestly, you know, one of the things I've learned, it, it really doesn't, it's not just me, you know, it, it takes all of us, every single one of the players, every single one of the players, um, we have to be on the same kind of, you know, idea to try to win a baseball game. So, you know, me understanding that and me trying to win as much as I can is definitely, I'm definitely happy with that, you know, um, in high A Greensboro, you know, we were able to get to the playoffs in the first half and, you know, honestly be leaders all, all throughout the second half of the season. And, you know, even when I got to Altoona, we were, you know, really on a good winning streak, winning six in a row. Eight, first eight games we won, we were, you know, seven and one. So it's, you know, me me being able to just go out there and just win as much as I can, you know, it's going to help me in the long term because, you know, I'm trying to win for Pittsburgh at, at, at the at the end of the day. So, you know, me learning how to do that early on in my career is definitely going to help me. And, he, and, and, and even these experiences like now, you know, trying to win this gold medal for every single one of the, everybody in America. So it's just, you know, me challenging myself and doing that is definitely going to help me in the long term for sure. Do you feel like when you focus on that, that winning, like it, it makes it easier to just kind of go about your business game to game? Because, you know, again, we talk about you, you play a full season, Every year you've played, like the stat line's going to be good, right? But of course, baseball has that roller coaster. There's ups and downs for everybody. Like for when sure. you focus on just the team aspect, does that make it easier to survive kind of the ups and downs that just come with such a difficult sport? Yeah, for sure. You know, just trying to put everything in the box and understand what you're trying to do at the end of the day. You know, like you said, man, we're playing, you know, 162 games ultimately. So, you know, it's, all, 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 it's always going to be a time where, you know, you're not feeling your best. You're not necessarily doing your best, but honestly, you know, keeping your mind on helping the team win and not so much about yourself is definitely, you know, help me, you know, and, you know, me doing whatever, you know, at the end of the day, I pride myself on just trying to get on base, make plays and, you know, be, be right there for my pitcher. So just doing that and me being consistently like that is definitely, you know, going to help me. It's a long season, man. Do you do you like disconnecting from baseball when you get away from the ballpark, or is it is it something that you know envelops you throughout the entire six months? Like, hey, I get home from the ballpark and I'm watching West Coast games. Are you are you kind of a baseball junkie, or is it I like Dude. doing some other stuff when I'm not at Dude, the ballpark? I am in love with this game. Like, I kid you not, for the past like eight months, after every baseball game, I'll hop on MLB the show. After every game, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch the Pirates play. Like, I just, it's, baseball just finds me. Like, even found myself yesterday for, we had, like, three hours after our practice. I'm just kicking it on MLB the show, playing playing with my own player, just, you know, just doing that. Just just because I love the game. So, you know, I haven't been able to disconnect too much from the game so far. And I don't see myself doing that, honestly, I love for that. a long time. So do you yeah. do like the road to the show thing or is yep, it like, yep. okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. I'm about He's eight, doing it in real life. Eight seasons in right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm eight seasons in right now. <laughs> so you, you take a break from your real life road to the show with road to the show. That's yeah. yeah. It, it, I think exactly. he loves baseball, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I love that. But you know, to that point, you know, something that stands out about your game, man, is, is, you know, how, how polished you are with your approach. And like, we went to the spring breakout. <laughs> Uh, that that and that was so much fun. I actually would love to get your thoughts on that, but I, I don't want to throw too many questions at you at once because at the spring breakout, obviously you're seeing a bunch of awesome arms, and you know we had the opportunity to kind of just nestle our way right behind home plate, and you know we're seeing some fastballs with some life, man. I mean, you had, you had some guys that were were throwing that. I mean, they could really spin it too. And what stood out to me is we're sitting right there, and I mean you're spitting on balls that are like one ball off the plate, two balls off the plate, but it's also just how easy the takes were and, you know, how committed you were to your approach. And these aren't guys that you had a scouting report on, right? It's kind of just like, Hey, we're throwing this guy yeah. out there and this guy out there. Like 
at, at what point did you realize that you have like just this innate feel for the strike zone? And, you know, how has that developed for you into pro ball as you start to face, you know, better and better arms? Yeah, I, I think, you know, me being in the high school circuit, you know, for a long period of time, you know, dating back to 14 years old, you know, I've been facing guys throwing, you know, those high 90s, you know, who could spin it pretty well, some of the best pitchers in the country. And honestly, like, you know, me understanding what I wanted to do, like you said, having my approach and me understanding that they got to come to me is um definitely been important to my game and how I, how I like to hit, you know. I, I pride myself on getting my pitch and hitting it and knowing what I want to hit, you know, not necessarily, you know, being so aggressive, but at the end of the day, knowing that when, when I do get my pitch, I'm aggressive to it, you know. So I think understanding that and me continuing to do that and, I, I like, you know, the progress that I made and still, like I said, more more progress to be made with my game. I'm always going to have progress to be made with my game. But, you know, me doing it early on and me doing it now has definitely, you know, helped me with, with you know, my game. Was there ever a point in your baseball career and like it could be pro or, you know, amateur, even like draft year you're building up where you felt like this need to be a little bit more swing happy. It's like, I got to go show people that I can hit. Did you ever feel that? Or was it, you know, as simple as if they're not throwing me something that I can do damage on, I'm not, I'm not even offering at it. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, like I show people that I can hit when I get my pitch, not necessarily like, you know, that I'm showing my, I'm showing people that I can hit when I'm just swinging at everything. You know, I feel like that's, you know, counterintuitive to, you know, how I am as a baseball player. So Honestly, just, you know, me understanding that I can't really do anything until they throw me what I need in order for me to hit hit you pretty far and hit you pretty hard. So me, you know, honestly, you're still working, work in progress, trying to be patient to it because, you know, I'll find myself in games where, man, I'm on my third walk and I'm like, damn, man, I, I want you to, I want to, I want to hit, you know, I want to, I want to be able to hit the ball. Like I haven't swung in three at bats, but, you know, me still being patient and, you know, it's only going to get better as, as I continue to grow older and as I continue to have experience in this game. Yeah. I always love to ask hitters that can do a little bit of both, right? Where you have the power, but you also have the ability to spray the ball and, and that B swing that can still shoot a line drive into the other gap. Like how you balance that? Because it's similar to the aggression in terms of like not take, not always wanting to walk and, you know, want to get your swing off, but also, you know, being able to lean into that power, which we, we know you've got that massive power potential and you tapped into that quite often. We've seen you hit home runs 112 plus miles per hour, but also you have that ability to spray the ball all over the field. How do you balance those two things? Because, you know, I think it could be sometimes easy to, especially when you're playing in Greensboro, start to think about that short fortune and right field and, and start trying to swing for it. But you also have that talent to get to different pitches and the approach and all of those things. You know, like, how do you kind of see yourself as a hitter on that spectrum of like contact versus power. And, you know, how do you balance that whole thing? Yeah, I think um, just understanding like each at bat, understanding each type of pitcher and understanding like, you know, what you need to do in order to get on base. Cause at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're only doing damage when you're on base and when you're, you know, helping your team at, at, at in that aspect. So I think me just understanding that, like, all right, in, in this count, I may be in a two, two count and a pitcher, you know, hasn't thrown a pitch that, you know, I'm, I'm not able to hit. So I got to kind of just, you know, either shorten up or, you know, expand a little bit and try to put the ball in play and see if, 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 if I can hit it where somebody's not, or, you know, I'm in a count where it's like, man, it's three Oh, this guy has to throw what he has to throw that pitch. So, you know, I got to be ready to hit it and I got to be ready to hit it far. So just understanding that and, you know, understanding that it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to understand what you need to do and, you just got to know in each at bat, you know, what you need to do. And it's definitely predicated on the situation because, you know, you, you may have runners on base and it may be that time in the game where the, you, you know, it doesn't necessarily call for a home run swing or it doesn't necessarily call for, you know, even a, a get on base type of swing. So it's just understanding each situation and, you know, learning from that. Yeah. Tomorrow got a couple more for you. There was a, uh, there was a moment that made me laugh in the minor league season in Greensboro. He Aram mentioned in Greensboro got me thinking about this. It was in Bowling Green. You hit a homer, I think, right field. The <laughs> scoreboard, Aram, you know what I'm talking about? The scoreboard exactly in Bowling about. Green flashed this, like, <laughs> smiley face that was frowning with a thumbs down. Do you have, like, a minor league moment from this year? Because I saw that and I laughed so hard, man. No, nah, seriously, that that probably was the my my fo my most favorite moment of the year so far. Like that that 
It made me laugh a lot for sure. You know, just looking back at that video, that was hilarious. And it was pretty crazy. Like, you know, I have never experienced nothing like that. But, you know, that's what happens in the game where you're in a way when you're a road team and, you know, nobody, no, no, no home team wants you to hit a home run that far. So it's kind of that that's just kind of what happens. But it's kind of it, it was funny. It, it, it definitely made me laugh a little bit for sure. Well, and, and building on that too, I mean, it can be such a grind of a season. Obviously you love the game, so it makes it a lot easier for someone like yourself, but you know, what are some ways that you just kind of keep yourself feeling light and enjoying the game? And, you know, even through the ups and downs of it, obviously moments like that are awesome. You know, is, is it the clubhouse, you know, Carson was talking about how, you know, they had a really nice, uh, just well tight knit group in Montgomery. Like what is it that kind of gets you other than just the love for the game, maybe excited to keep getting back to the ballpark? I mean, just understanding, you know, the blessing that God gave me, honestly, like, you know, th th these are the things that I pray for. You know, these are the things that, you know, I asked him and these are the things that I've worked towards. So, you know, me being grateful and me, you know, understanding that this is what this is what I want. And um, that's definitely helped me, you know, in, 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 you know, my career so far. So me just understanding that every day, you know, I, obviously when things aren't necessarily going your way, it's hard to necessarily think about that. But. Honestly, like I try to be grateful for every single day because I know, you know, God put me in this position, you know, to to do these things. So I'm just grateful for it. Awesome. Tomorrow, last one from me. Um, we, you know, I, I'm lucky I get kind of a front row seat of this being in Indianapolis, like, you know, gotten the chance to chat with with Skeens and with Bubba and with Harrington and Jarrett Jones and all these, you know, bats that are coming through as well. Boy, you, yeah. You, you get to be a part of that, man. Like, how exciting is what the Pirates have blossoming right now? And everybody's in pre-arb, like, you know, they're going to be there for a while. Being in this Pirates situation, what is that like for you on a day-to-day -day basis in the minor leagues? No, it's amazing. You know, um, we're, we're grateful and we're excited for everything that's about to come. You know, we, we have some big things going. We have some great pitching, you know, great. We have a great group, honestly. And we all we're, we're tight knit. We're close with each other. And we we all understand what what's, you know, ahead. So, you know, we're definitely excited, you know, to get up in Pittsburgh and, you know, to, you know, help help these fans, help this team win and, you know, get get this World Series for everybody. You know, we definitely have the tools to do it. You know, we just got to make sure that we're doing the right things every single day and every single season just to, you know, inch closer towards, you know, getting that World Series because, you know, that's what we want. You know, we want to get that out. We want to get that. We want to get the best out of it for sure. Last one from me is is just for you as an individual, because I know you, you talk team and and I love that. I know Pirates fans are loving to hear that. But, you know, through this offseason, you know, after after this tournament, you know, what are some things that you're focused on as, as you get ready for you know the upper minors and you get closer and closer to that that big league opportunity for you as a player? Kind of what are some of the things that you, you want to focus on going into next season that you think can you know get you in that next step to be ready to go? Yeah, honestly, just making sure my body's ready for what's um to become, you know, yeah. uh, I know, I know that my, my, my bat is going to swing. I know my defense is going to play. I know that arm is going to arm. I know I'm going to run. So I just got to make sure that my body is ready for everything that it, that that's going to come, you know, and I'm just trying to prepare myself, you know, mentally and physically just to, you know, you know, be ready for whatever it is. So I'm excited. Hey, winning a tournament should be uh it should be what immediate focus, right? This is uh next. Oh few yeah. Days. That like gold medal. Yeah. That gold medal is definitely the focus <laughs> and we're, and we, we're going to get it for sure. We're going to do whatever it takes to get it for sure. I love that. Yeah. I, I did say after the tournament, it's something is defense, but that, that, that is, that is going to be really fun for you guys. And I mean, I can imagine how, how exciting it is to potentially play in Tokyo, man. Best of luck. You guys have an awesome group and we can't wait to tune in and we're excited to see you keep doing your thing. For sure. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it.